Good morning to you and greetings on this All Saints Sunday. Uh, we, uh, I send greetings to you, both those who are gathered here in this sanctuary, uh, those who are listening on the radio, and those who are uh, tuned in by way of live stream. I live streamed from Denver last Sunday and was, uh, was with you in spirit um, in, a, in a chair in uh, Denver, Colorado. Um, please remember to register your attendance if you haven't done that yet. And of course, um, all announcements are important, but let it, uh, I, I, I don't want to be blamed for not letting you know that Friday is the last day that you can reserve a casserole. Yeah. Our Methodist women uh, are selling casseroles and um, cinnamon rolls, Doris's cinnamon rolls, and uh, you can reserve these now and get them before Thanksgiving or Christmas. Uh, I've, I've seen tables set up in various places. Don't forget it. This is All Saints Sunday. The church has been observing All Saints Sunday for well over a thousand years. Notice the word all. We uh, remember on this day all of those who have gone before us, not just members of this church, but all of those who have, uh, have given witness and testimony to their faith. And particularly in these uh, years of pandemic, uh, there is not a one of us who has not been touched by uh, somebody's death that perhaps we are remembering in this sanctuary this morning. But specifically, we are reading the names of those who in this church have witnessed faithfully to their faith over the course of their life. Uh, their family members are gathered here this morning, uh, many of them sitting right here in the front, but I see others of you scattered out throughout the congregation and, and even in our choir. And so um, we uh, particularly uh, greet those of you here for whom uh, death is a more uh, a, a recent reality, and uh, we join our hearts with yours. Um, as we celebrate and as we sing and as we pray to the God of resurrection. This is Communion Sunday as well. Communion instructions are printed in the bulletin. I would simply say to you that um, the table is open to everybody. You do not need to be a member of this church. The Lord be with you.
Let us pray together. Loving God, we, your saints, gather to worship and praise you this day. We celebrate the saints who have served you and have been an example for us through the past. We give you thanks for the joy of being part of the communion of saints and those who have gone before and those scattered around the globe. Open us to your spirit to continue being the saints you have called us to be. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Let us now remember those from this congregation who over the last year now share the triumph of Christ. Eleanor Castellaw. Marie Kersey. Betty Barnes. Norma Munford. Melody Shearer. Ann Wilkes. Elizabeth Drennan. Jim Trice. Janice Norton. Arthur Crowell. Sandra Shineman. Bob Bailey. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live. For they are now a part of us as we remember them. Let us pray together. We bless your holy name, O God, for all your servants who, having finished their course, now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Children up to fifth grade are invited to exit for Children's Church at this time.
least now I'm not crying. <laughs> Hear now the words of the Old Testament for us, the people here today at Mulberry. Isaiah 26. Feet trample it down, the feet of the oppressed, the footsteps of the poor. The path of the righteous is level. O oh, upright one, you make the way of the righteous smooth. Yes, Lord, walking in the way of your laws, we wait for you. Your name and renown are the desires of our heart. My soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Creed has already spoken well about the meaning of this day and of this service. Our thoughts and prayers go back uh, to, to many uh, memories, all of which we are grateful for. And as he said, we, we call these particular names as a special focus of our congregation. But each one of us has other names whom we remember in the recesses of our hearts, and we remember them as well. Because today is a day that we come to remember and to celebrate their lives. Thornton Wilder wrote these words, there is a land of the living and a land of the dead and the bridge between them is love. The hurts have begun to heal some more for, uh, more for some of you, less for those whom the, the wound is more recent. We seek to be conscious of the strength at this time that saw us through the crisis. There are those in, in our society and in our lives who would never speak of death. They find excellent circumlocutions to, to get around saying words like that. And yet, it will not go away, no matter how we might try to ignore it. Indeed, it is the ultimate peril. It is the last enemy of humankind. So rather than ignore its reality, when we gather in worship, we confess our inability on our own to deal with it. But rather than despair, we seek strength to see us through. I'd like to suggest three convictions that give us strength as we go through. While it is true, and I absolutely believe this, that we do not believe in God only for the next world. There are those whom think that is true, you know, the old pie in the sky by and by kind of, kind of approach. I believe with all of my heart that this life is infinitely better when it's lived for him and with him. But even though I believe in that with all my heart, it must be said and I am grateful that we can say that, that we do not live only for this world. In great words of Isaiah uh, in, a, in a nearby chapter to what you have heard read, the, the language is always in the future tense, speaking of what will be. And that in itself, the simple syntax of the passage is a theological reminder, is a spiritual reminder to us of what is yet to be. In those words, Isaiah speaks of how a shroud and a sheet will be destroyed. The images do not come immediately clear, but finally it does because the prophet says God will swallow up death. 
If you read the mythology of the ancients, you, you read the stories of the superhuman uh, uh, beings involved in struggles and battles with each other. In the church, we turn to a different voice, very often to the words of John Donne, that great English priest and poet. He began his sonnet, Death, be not proud. He concluded it by saying, Death, thou shalt die. One conviction that we stand on as we come to this, these moments is that death is not God's last word. And because death itself shall die, sorrow will be taken away, not eliminated. Not, it is not for us to pretend we do not feel it. No, 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 certainly not. But it will be taken away from us. This last year, as, as Creed indicated, has been an especially difficult one, not only for those of us gathered here, but indeed for the whole world, a, a, a time unlike anything this world has seen for a hundred years. But what we're about here is very, is, is most of what the, the deaths that we have talked about have come for different reasons. There is a pall over our society. We hope that it, it lifts ever so slowly. But sorrow takes its toll on our lives. It invades our lives for many causes, not death of a loved one alone. Sorrow saps our strength. It steals our hope. And when we think we have closed the door and shut it out forever, it sneaks in by the window and makes off with our joy. But the prophet says, God will wipe away all tears. He will take away the disgrace. And another conviction on which we stand is that sorrow itself shall be taken away. In the third conviction, there are words in that chapter of Isaiah where the poet says, this is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Of all the resources that we can draw on in time of grief, and there are many, many of whom sit near us when we gather for worship, but of all those resources, the one standing above all others is the truth that it is God whom we ultimately need. We would love to have our loved ones back. Most of us have been through the experience and for a while perhaps we say, well, if, if only they could still be here. But many times we have to realize that, that if they came back as they had been, we would not wish that for them. Now, we are not sure how to go on in our lives, but we give thanks that in the words of the, of the Korean creed, God can be our comfort, God can be our guidance, and God can be our strength. The New Revised Standard Version of those words says, this is our God on whom we have waited. Let me play let me do just a little bit of that uh, picking on the words, the jot and tittle kind of thing, it may seem at first. In the, if you were to read from the New International Version, it would more likely say, this is our God in whom we trust. Are we waiting or do we trust? So I do not know Hebrew. I would not pretend to do that, but as I read those who do know more Hebrew than I, it seems that the word trust is more interpretation than literal translation, but it is an excellent interpretation because we cannot wait unless we trust. You do not wait on someone to meet you for an appointment if you do not trust that they will be there in hours like these, in hours of sorrow, we wait on God because we trust in him. And we know that life around us forces us to wait in many reasons, in, in many times, and not for reasons that we understand. 
Mother Teresa was once asked by a man who, uh, and you hear these stories about Mother Teresa, how she entertained visits from, from different people for spiritual counsel. And this man said to her, I wish that you would pray for me to have clarity about God's will because you are a person with great clarity. Mother Teresa said, no, I am not a person. I do not have clarity, but I have trust. And I will not pray that you have clarity. I will pray that you have trust. I heard these words in a funeral service for a man uh, in Waycross, Georgia, a man who had lived a brilliant and productive, but in some sense, tragic life. It's a life that left us wondering what could have been and what might be if only those, those hints that his life was coming back to, to time, the times that he had stood the tallest, if only those hints had turned into reality. The family learned to trust God with all the thoughts and emotions that coursed through their hearts. There will come a time, a day when death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning or crying or pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. Words from the prophet picked up in 1 Corinthians, picked up in the Revelation. They were written, they were remembered by people who knew that Christ had risen. And so do we. So do we. So we know that there is a land of the living and a land of the dead, and the bridge between them is love. And we know that the love is provided by God. For the greatest peril facing humanity, we have the greatest promise. Indeed, he is our God. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart we have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In silence, let us confess our own sinfulness before God. Now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By your baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we have named before you and those we now remember in our hearts. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Now with confidence of children of God, may we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
May we join in the prayer after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we gather to remember special people who are a part of this church who have gone before us, we invite anyone who wishes to become a part of this congregation to uh, meet Creed and me at the, at the front during the singing of the hymn. May we sing together in God's praise. And now, as saints of God, chosen and true, go forth to love and to live for Christ in the world. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours now and forever. Amen. Amen.